So the first thing I want to do here is I want to remove all of this excess kind of tooth. It's called the gullet, this little section down here. We want to get rid of that. And each time we do a filing, do three or four passes and then just have a quick look. See what you're actually doing. So we'll remove this first. Okay, we're starting to get rid of that gullet down there. And now we're putting in a very small C. I'm going to keep going a few more passes. And I'd say we're kind of there in terms of the rough shape. But now what we want to do is bring that whole thing back so that we have a nice C in there. This top corner, which is currently damaged, is removed. So Bucking Billy Ray calls this the boat. And, and I really like it to hog out material. Essentially, handle starts up, you drop down, and then you lower the handle, and you basically remove the material very, very quickly. Now we've gotten rid of that, I'm gonna do passes where I'm literally gonna be pulling back. I'm not going down and I'm not coming up, I'm just coming back. So now we'll do a few just straight back. Have a quick look. So we're maintaining that C shape. We're not uh, leaving any gullet there, but we've still got a lot more that we need to remove to get rid of this damage. We'll continue. It's a bit awkward, I'm holding my hand up like this. So you have to bear with me, it's not my normal filing position. So where are we? Quite hard to see here because you're in the way, so I'm gonna use your camera. So again, a really nice C-shape. We've removed the gullet. We haven't got too much of a sharp top or working corner, um, but we still have more to remove. You can hear it grabbing. Occasionally the file will stop. It's because I haven't got this other hand to kind of smooth. I'm almost doing this one-handed, so you have to bear with me, um, but you'll get the idea. But look, still maintain that really nice C shape. That corner's coming nice and sharp now, but there is the top up here. If you have a quick look up here now, you'll be able to see that actually there's still a lot of damage to the chrome. Where are we? Here? Let's zoom out. There's still a lot of damage to the chrome, um, so we want to get rid of all that damage. Can you see there, especially here? Uh, and at the moment, I'm not focusing too much on getting this perfectly true and square. We'll do that shortly, so let's put you back. Okay. Right, let's have a quick look there. That C is really nice. Quite hard to see from this angle, but from roughly what I can see, it looks really nice. But we still have more to go. So you can see how many passes this is taking, and it's not even sharp yet. Okay, now we're getting close. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm still happy with the C shape, it looks great. Um, now what I'm gonna do is slow down. I'm gonna now get this, this uh, top plate cutting angle, not the cutter angle, there's a difference. I was saying that earlier. Top plate cutting angle is 30 degrees on this chain. The top plate cutter angle is about 70, and that's this angle between this uh, face that you can't actually see at the moment and the top plate. It's that 70 degrees that we want. And we're basically gonna slow things down. We're gonna make sure we're nice and true. We've removed all the damage and we're just finishing up the tooth now. So here we go. So that's it. That's that tooth done. Of course, we still have to uh, hit the depth gauge, but we're not gonna worry about that just this second. We're gonna carry on about the tooth. 
Now it's very hard for me to see from this angle, so bear with me, I'm going to pop it out and I just need to take the chain out to actually see because the phone's right in the way. Uh, so it just so happens we have one rocked tooth and one tooth that I've literally just filed and you can see the difference. Uh, let me go and get a pointer, wait there. So the first thing, what we we essentially started removing this section in here, doing what's what Bucking Billy Ray calls the boat, and I, I really like it. So that removed this lower section here. It got rid of all of that. You can see the difference. And then what I literally ended up doing was instead of pushing down, I kept the file flat and I came back to create this C shape. Uh, can you see the tooth there? It's probably a bit clearer, isn't it? To get this really nice C shape and a sharp working corner. Now look up here, we haven't got that C shape. The working corner is completely smart. This just won't do anything, okay? So that is a really nice side by side. Now a couple of things that I've run into. The first thing is when you're doing this, don't lift up because you're gonna end up with this kind of ski ramp. Don't go too far down because not only are you gonna remove the gullet, don't worry about cutting into the tie strap, but not only are you gonna remove too much gullet, you're gonna make this working corner too acute, you're gonna to have too much of a C. And the other thing is the position of the file in this tooth will determine how this top working corner looks. And I made some notes up there. I'll just run you through essentially what's happening. If you look, uh, this is what it should be, this nice C. If the file is too low, the apex of the C will be too low in the tooth and you'll end up with almost like an S shape. So instead of that working corner being sharp like this, you'll end up with a bit of an uh, S shape. So uh, that's where we are at the moment. That is, in my opinion, and in my experience currently, which is, I've done a fair bit, but definitely, you know, not like a lot of these guys, but uh, it cuts beautifully. But now what we need to do is we go back into the vise and we're gonna go and address the raker. So I've brought you out slightly now, and we're gonna use the 404, because this is a 404 pitch um, chain. And this is by Steel. They, they, I think they call them progressive raker gauges. And you have a soft and you have a hard setting. Uh, I like to do, obviously, the hard setting. I have lots of hardwoods out here, and uh, it still cuts really nicely. So the long and short of it is we place it down, and you can see how much raker we have to remove, which is essentially that little nub on the top. Let's zoom in. I need to remove all of that excess raker that's sitting up on the top here, this little section. Now, to keep this guide in place, uh, it's just pointless for now. So I'm just gonna essentially use a flat file and I'm gonna remove that excess. I'm just gonna steal that off my rack. I'm gonna put my thumb over the working corner here so I don't hit it. And I'm literally just gonna do a number of passes and then I'm gonna check. Okay, so now what I need to do, there's probably eh, about half a millimetre on the top. It will probably be one, two passes max. One, two, just a few light ones. Yeah, it's nothing. Okay, so now we've got that. The last thing we want to do, and the re I'll just give you a quick, why didn't I leave that there and just run over it? Because um, there's a chance that you can overshoot it. I'm very close to overshooting it, but that was just luck. Didn't expect it to come down that quick. But the reason why is because... Each time you use this, I'm, I'm, I'll occasionally I'll press on it. You're gonna press on that working corner um, and you're gonna end up dulling it slightly. Yes, you can go lighter and, and less passes, but it's just, sometimes it's just easier just to take this out of the way, do a few passes, double check it, and, and you're gonna get very, very close. And then the last few passes, leave it there and you'll be fine. Last thing you wanna do is, as this chain rocks, you're gonna, you can end up hitting this corner up here and uh, now I've been told, this is not my experience because I've just done it. I've been told that by swooping or smoothing this corner off here, it's a smoother cut or it feels smoother in the cut. Now I have never done it where I just leave them rough like this. I've always taken the advice of the more experienced people that I've spoken to and gone with it. Um, so it, it's so quick and easy, watch this. So I'm not gonna hit this working or this, this very flat section keep my finger on my thumb here, and we'll just do a few passes. We've softened that off now, and 
that is that tooth done. Let me just show you from this angle. So we have uh, a 30 degree top plate cutting angle. That's this angle here. I'll show you that in a second. Let me go get, uh, I'll show you in a sec. Then we have around about a 60-ish degree uh, cutter angle, which forms the C shape of the tooth. We've adjusted the raker height to match the tooth. And we've also rounded that raker off. So let me just show you this angle. Oh, let me, let me get, okay, this might be a bit tricky. So essentially what we're looking for is 30 degrees from the, the if I'm 90 degrees to the direction of this way that's traveling. Uh, oh, sorry, that was up 50. We're looking for 30 degrees end on, which is kind of something like, how can I hold it? Kind of like that. But an easier way of positioning it is actually putting it at 70 degrees, sorry, 60 degrees, and coming in from the side. So if I put a plonk of wood, put a plonk, plonk a piece of wood there, and I hold it like this, you can see we are practically bang on there. So that's our 30 degrees there. And the last thing is make sure that you have a burr running all the way along up to the working corner and then round here. A burr is a shiny piece of metal, which is basically, where's my torch? Oh, here. Watch this, let me turn the light off. I'm coming in down here and you can see that there's a shiny, there. Can you see it's all shiny, it kind of like a, a oh, it's a burr, it's a, piece, a wire edge on the tooth. It starts here, goes up to the working corner, and it will come round, it will be here too. You see it's essentially all the way around. Quite hard to show you, but that's essentially telling you that we have got a sharp or apexed tooth, and that's what we want. So, that's a bit better. Okay, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps someone else out. Um, as I said, I'm not purporting to be some expert. I'm not, I, I'm just an average bloke that started freehand filing. I just wanted to share a few points that he's learned in a kind of condensed fashion. Um, and uh, that's literally the long and short of it. Um, take from it what you will. Uh, some people are not gonna like the fact that you heard it go as it comes back a couple of times, just gently passing. That's the way I file. I like to be in that kind of groove. If I go push it, and then I have to come out and then uh, 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 uh. it just doesn't feel smooth. I'm not, I'm not really forcing it back across the, the file at all. It's just gently touching it. Um, and it just allows me to keep right in that tooth. And it just, for me, uh, makes the process smoother. Um, so again, I'm not purporting to be some expert. I'm not purporting to tell you that you should or shouldn't do that way. Um, people always talk about dragging the file back. Yeah, if you're going to really force it back, it's not good. But uh, the odd little here and there, it, 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 don't worry about it. Don't get too hung up on all these little minors about perfect teeth uh, length and perfect shape. It really, for file, if we're working on uh, wanting absolutely perfect life out of a file, then yes, you want to do just right. You don't want to force, you don't want to go too crazy. Maybe you want to use a slightly softer chain, but re the reality is, it's just forget about it. If they're not all perfectly 30 degrees on the uh, top plate cutting angle, don't worry about it. If it's 32, 33, 28, obviously if we're miles out each time, yes, you will get a difference, but don't obsess. And I'm saying this because I used to, and it's not necessary. I've done tests with it, it's really not necessary. Don't get wound up. If you're working on race chain, which I know nothing about, let me just say, I have no idea. Um, I can imagine you want it to be perfect. But uh, this is firewood cutting, this is just fun, and uh, don't get too worked up about it. So there we go. That's it, that's how I do it. That's how I've learned from others that have been generous enough to share what they know. Hopefully this is giving you an idea of maybe uh, something for you to try and uh, go from there. It's all I can say, it's all I can suggest with the, the experience I've got at the moment. Um, I would say I'm comfortable at sharpening and uh, I know what to look for. I've got more to learn, but uh, this is just my channel, my journey. And I hope that maybe there was something in here that you found useful, whether it be the angles, whether it be whatever. 
So there we go, guys. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to update you on the OAS. That's actually gone now. Uh, the 076, which we're going to put new parts on, which aren't in yet. So uh, excited for that. But hey, it's just one more thing. It's my channel. I can do what I like. And uh, this is a video I wanted to share. And you never know, maybe if I stop using chainsaws in five years, I come back and I think, oh, how did I sharpen that last time? Or what did I aim for? I've got it down. There we go, guys. Catch you soon.